Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Why don't we uh, get our lungs exercised a bit? How about that? You want to do that? Why don't we stand up? We're going to sing as we've come here to worship. We've come here to glorify, uplift the name of Jesus. And so we're going to sing the song, He is Exalted. And if this is a new song to you, just go ahead and follow me. Very easy song, but uh, one that I believe uplifts and glorifies our Heavenly Father. Let's sing. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His holy name. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise his name. He is the Lord, forever his truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted, the King is exalted on This next song, we're going to kind of treat it as our opening song, but this song is uh, might be a new one to you as well, and uh, this is a song that has really made a difference in my own walk with God. This, this is a, a, a beautiful, beautiful song that speaks to the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ, and so my hope and my prayer is that this is your prayer as well, knowing you. Let's sing it out. Thank you. 
Christmas and I love you. Oh, let's do that one more time. Knowing you. Knowing you, Jesus. Knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all. You're the best. You're my joy, my righteousness. Church family. Good morning, church family. Nah, it's better. I I heard you that time. I uh, I was slow this morning getting ready, and uh, well, I left the house without my hearing aids. So uh, I'm sorry if I have to ask twice to get a. Are we excited to be here today? Yes, I'm excited to worship my Lord too. So um, I'm going to be uh, doing some uh, welcome, welcoming, and I've seen a few new faces today that uh, uh, we welcome you to join us here at Corrales, and um, I'm a little slow on the uptake when it comes to learning names with new faces. So uh, those new faces, uh, I'm talking about... I'll get the name shortly. Um, we want to go through a few of the uh, announcements today. Um, there was a couple of, uh, of uh, announcements that I'm going to have to change devices because uh, we don't have all the announcements on our announcements. Uh, if you don't get the email, from the church on the announcements. It has more information usually. And so uh, bear with me and I'll have that here in just a second. Some of the uh, announcements that I would like to, to talk about is the Adventist Community Services, ACS. And uh, if you would like to donate funds to families and individuals affected by hurricane floodwaters in Florida, they are asking for help. If you want to write in at the, uh, the uh, envelopes for our collection, uh, Florida Hurricanes on your offering, uh, that would be uh, uh, how you could designate your funds to go to helping the people in Florida after this last hurricane. Um, Another one that's very important is the substitute teachers are needed at Sandia View Academy. So if you're, a, if you're a skilled in teaching and you're available, they're asking for substitute teachers. And you can get a hold of them at the Sandia View Academy's phone number, um, which I won't give you because uh, you'd have to write it down or you might not remember any rate. Um, November 16th, which is next Wednesday, we're going to have a Roadrunner Mobile Food Pantry uh, at the uh, Sandia View Academy's gym. Volunteers are needed from 1 to 4 to set up, assist with distribution, to tear down and clean up 
Uh, you can contact Al uh, if you're interested and feel moved to go and help with that uh, because, you know, the Bible does say if you fed the hungry, you fed me. So, and that was Jesus speaking. So remember that uh, some people are less fortunate and could use our help. And uh, so at any rate, uh, there's a few other ones. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing next Sabbath a all-church Thanksgiving prayer breakfast. So uh, get up a little earlier and join us for the Thanksgiving um, prayer breakfast next Sabbath. And then the, uh, the last one that I found is uh, interesting. Us not being raised Seventh-day Adventists and coming to this church late in life, um, we, we're not used to being vegetarians and, and vegan. Um, so there's going to be some help for you that don't understand uh, about being vegetarians and vegans. And that's going to be at Central uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church on the 20th. And they're going to be uh, hosting a plant-based nutrition recipes class at 5 o'clock. So are we excited about that one? Well, maybe we should be. So uh, uh, if I don't see you there... Maybe you can ask me how well that went, and I'll do my best to uh, not disappoint. So, uh, at any rate, those are some of the announcements that we have. Um, there's a couple others that I'm going to assist in getting some help with. Um, the, uh, the first person I would like to go ahead and, and ask to come up and, and to share with us on announcing uh, this activity is going to be Charlene and uh, Charlene is going to take over she's going to take over for a few minutes and she's going to address one of the missions that she is involved in and so uh, Charlene you have the floor along with your bulletin today as you came in you were handed these brochures from Child Impact which is an organization fighting against the exploitation of children. Their projects ad address child trafficking, baby abandonment, slave labor, forced begging rings, refugees, gang recruitment prevention, child brides, and domestic violence. Inside the back cover, of the larger brochure, you will find a map noting the countries where the organization has a presence. Child Impact operates schools, providing basic necessities and increased learning outcomes for orphans, children with disabilities, and children from impoverished families. Children in some of the poorest countries in the world have a safe place to live and learn in Adventist schools breaking the cycle of generational poverty. Child Impact also manages schools for the visually and hearing impaired in rural India, where these disabilities are often seen as hopeless diagnosis. Children are taught by specially trained teachers and are able to become productive members of society. The organization's most recent project is in Honduras, where a school provides bilingual education to underprivileged children. In pursuit of better living conditions, many fathers attempt to find work in the United States, and we do hear about the fathers. But what we don't hear about is that with no father to depend them, to defend them, the children are at risk of being abused by people who are aware of their vulnerability. In order to find some sense of safety and protection, some children join gangs. Through Operation Child Rescue, children who come from these backgrounds are able to attend school in safety. If you would like to support Child Impact, a check or credit card information may be sent in the envelope that is in this biggest brochure. If you would like to phone in a donation, 
or if you would like to go to their website, childimpact.org, you could give by credit card, and that information is on the back of this smaller brochure. Both of these brochures have a lot of very interesting information. And if you don't have a set of these brochures, you may pick them up on your way out, or you can see me. I have some, too. Thank you. Thank you, Charlene. I have uh, another introduction to make. This is another announcement, and uh, this time I'm introducing Diane Grulay, who is going to uh, tell us about a very exciting activity, uh, and I don't want to be a spoiler, so um, Diane, go ahead and come up and uh, share with us your excitement. Okay. Thanks, Terry. Yes, I am excited to, <clears throat> excuse me, to let you guys know what we're doing tonight at the school, at the uh, San Diego Christian School gym, starting at 6 p.m. and going till 8 p.m. I think that's about all we can handle right now. Um, we are going to be having our fall festival tonight. So this is one of our home and school. Christy and Sam and Mag, I don't know if Mag McGully's here. But our home and school is alive and well, and they are fully active this year. And this is one of our biggest school fundraisers. Let me tell you a little bit what we're raising money for. So if you're not able to come, maybe you could help push this project a little further along. We were awarded some uh, grant items through um, a CARES Act project that we went through with the government, and we were awarded some canopies, uh, awnings, you know, like, um, like you see it in Priscilla's playground, you see the awnings. Well, they did not come with any of the poles or anything to install them with. So that's kind of what we're raising money for is to get these poles so that we could have awnings and shade out for the kids um, in the playground and the staff, you know, they have to sit out in the sun. So that's kind of what we're raising money for, for this particular project. So let me tell you a little bit about tonight. Oh, we're super excited. Um, first of all, on behalf of the school, I am so glad you guys are here. I would love, love, love for you guys to help me to thank the Wagners. If it wasn't for this wonderful, wonderful family, we would not have anything in the gym. They gave us corn stalks and corn and hay and pumpkins. Uh, the trailer you see sitting outside, we're going to be having a fun, I mean, um, hayride tonight. So all of that was donated out of the kindness of their heart from the Wagners. So Roxanne and Seth, I see both of you here. And Jimmy, thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of the school. We couldn't do it without you. Oh, oh, and they're also bringing two goats, live goats. We're gonna have it at the school. So we're gonna have a little petting zoo for the kiddos. So we're super excited about um, tonight. So we're going to be selling food, of course, and we're gonna be having all kinds of different things that you normally see at a little carnival, all of the booths and stuff. But we're also going to have the Xyla Scholarship Foundation is going to be offering, uh, selling boba teas. So to me, they had me at boba teas, but if you need a little bit more incentive to come or a little bit more fun, we are actually, oh, I'm so excited. We're gonna be auctioning our, if you've ever wanted to see our pastor, our head elder, Sandra, our athletic director, Alex, and our seventh and eighth grade teacher, Yvette Chacon. If you've ever wanted to see any of those on a mechanical bull, come out and help us to raise money. And as soon as they reach their goal of whatever we, um, I don't remember exactly what we set as their goal, as soon as we reach that dollar amount, they have agreed to get on that bull. And so if you've ever wanted to see any of these people on a mechanical bull, come on out. I'm super excited about that. Sandra jumped in at the last minute. Thank you, thank you. So we're also doing a picture booth. Yvette has graciously uh, brought in her. She owns a picture booth outfit thing that she's gonna come in. So you can come and get your, you know how you usually get those like four little pictures in a postcard or whatever. So we're gonna have that. So come on out six to eight tonight and 
join us for a fun, I mean, even if you don't even go to the school or whatever, everybody's welcome. So thank you, Home and School, for being alive and well and helping us out here. So thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to actually, um, go ahead, Terry. I'll let Terry jump in. Um, my inexperience uh, doing this leaks out once in a while. I should have mentioned at the back of the pews we have prayer request cards and I should have mentioned that before I had Diane come up because Diane is also going to be doing the prayer and praises but uh, if you can write really fast uh, the deacons will collect your prayer request and your praises so that Diane can continue doing what Diane does. So, Amen. Thank you, Terry. I could always talk about more about the fall festival, but I won't. Just come on out and have fun. Um, so if anybody has any prayer requests that you've already written out, go ahead and raise your hands, and then the deacons can jump around and grab them, and then we could um, get this part of it going. I don't sing, so I'm not, I'm not entertaining. No, just kidding. Um, I don't know where Ned is. Ned. Oh, there he is. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. There's a couple coming up. I do have a couple online. I think I've been kind of following them. Um, Sue Kanan, which is Casey's mom, um, has said, happy birthday, church family. We miss you today. We miss you as well, Sue. Um, Tracy Layton has said, happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> That's what I read. <laughs> happy Sabbath. Um, happy Sabbath back to you, Tracy. Uh, Sunny also says, happy Sabbath. Um, Denise has said, please keep in prayer David Charles Griffiths and James Willis, both whom are recovering from illness. Uh, let me see. Uh, Don Kanan, which is Casey's dad, said, please pray for Susie to recover from a wicked virus that has put her down today. So even in sickness, we praise God for internet uh, to where they could still join us today. And I believe that's all we have right now so far. I'll keep an eye on that as we go. Okay, so this one says, best friend's family who lost their sister this week has a young daughter who is currently in foster system. Please pray for their family to be able to successfully adopt her. So yes, we'll pray for the, the family for the death as well as the, the child that needs a forever home. Um, this one is uh, from Carol. Uh, she would like to pray for her family, so we will keep your family in prayer, Carol. Um, that one's empty. Um, this one's from Mr. E. Uh, please pray for Carolyn Clark and family. So, Mr. Eske, we will definitely keep Carolyn Clark and her family in our prayer for this week at the, at the for the prayer request. This one is from Dale Jean. Uh, she would like to pray for Jen, who's in her teens. This is our newest preschooler. Oh, hello, Marilyn. Um, she was just diagnosed with heart disease. So yes, Delgene, we will pray for Jen and Rena, Rena, who needs surgery, but is too sick to have the surgery. So yes, Delgene, we will definitely keep both of these uh, young ladies in prayer. Um, oh, thank you. Um, let me see. Please pray for Sam and Jay. I believe it's Jay. That's what it sounds like. So we will keep them too in prayer as well. Okay. Um, Willie would like to pray for his cousin Soul needs a heart transplant. So yes, definitely. We'll keep all of these in prayer. That's that's definitely a big one. Pray for my kids and my safety and Maryland's. So yes, we will pray for, for your family. Um, this one's from Casey, uh, Mrs. Harris. Praise, yesterday was two years exactly since my stem cells transplant. Very grateful to be alive. Praise for Miles Bring, 
Ringel, her donor. So she was actually able to find out who her donor is. So yes, we all praise God. <laughs> yes, thank you, Casey. Uh, this is from Nancy, praising God for another birthday. So happy birthday, Nancy. <laughs> Um, this one is from Ange, Miss Angie, praying for the family of Skyler, who died fighting alongside Ukrainian soldiers. Prayers requested for my cousin Cynthia Gay, and uh, she is recovering from a second back surgery. So yes, Angie, we will keep your, your uh, friends definitely in prayer. Um, the prayer group does take all of these and we put them into a uh, prayer list and it gets sent out each week that we can keep up in prayer. So if you ever have a prayer during the week, I invite you to get a hold of Sue Canaan or Del Jean, myself, Mercedes, anybody that you guys can get hold of and we'll get this to the prayer group if you guys have prayers or requests during the week. So um, as far as possible can I get everybody to kneel with me um, just to bring these prayer requests before God thank you father in heaven Lord we humbly bow before you we come before you this Sabbath day bringing praise heartache concern worries Lord we just lift them all up and put them in your hands Lord, you know our hearts, you know our minds, and you know our concerns, you know our praises. Lord, we ask that you take this group of cards and just put it close to your heart, Lord, and as your will be done, Lord, just touch each one of those people that have brought these prayers before you. Lord, we thank you for our church. We thank you for our schools. Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over us as we always continue to to believe and to remember that those are yours and that you have blessed us to be vessels inside those those buildings. Lord, we ask that you be with the children today as they do their part of the children's story. We ask that you be with Pastor Mike as he gives us your word and that we are open to the words that he has for us. Lord, we thank you and we love you. Amen. <laughs> Oh boy, this is one of my favorite times before we have our, our message, and, and they're already getting ready. This is children's story time, and uh, boy, they're anxious, and they're going to start coming up the aisle, and they're going to take a collection, so uh, may you uh, freely give, and... Uh, I think this is wonderful because basically getting them involved at a young age, they're, 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 they're learning how to tithe, they're learning how to be generous, and they're learning how to uh, do the work that's necessary to, to worship our Lord. And I'm going to introduce the next person who's now going to take over, uh, and that's Brother Al, and uh, he's going to be leading the children in the children's story. So uh, while he comes up, I'm going to come down.
We have a little straggler back there. He's good at cleaning the pockets out completely because some of you guys hold back for future donation. <laughs> Remember, my mom calls those little ones los inocentes, the innocent ones. So you could not necessarily buy your way to heaven, but a little extra in the couple and her. How many of you folks are looking, you kids are looking for the uh, uh, Christmas? No? Wow, I'm with the wrong group here. <laughs> Dang, you guys give me hope. <laughs> the toys don't have to be expensive. There you go, kids. Our parents, nobody raised their hand. They're excited about Christmas. Because how many people look Chris, uh, forward to Christmas for what? What do you look forward to Christmas for? Presents. Yes, presents. And like little, mm, getting off of school for two weeks. <laughs> That's an older kid you can notice out there, right? When you're little, you have simple little requests. As we get older, paid vacation, maybe a little bonus in the check, stuff like that. But I bring that up too, because how many of you guys know the Ten Commandments? Okay. No. Does anybody remember anything? Uh, one of the commandments about stealing. How does that sort of go, Samuel? No, you wait ten minutes. Do you remember how that uh, commandment goes? It's real simple. It just says, "Thou shalt not steal." Well, what does stealing have to do with Christmas? Let me tell you a story, and this is a true story about a kid that grew up in a large family of six kids and only a mom, and uh, so things were sort of tight back then, right? And this one kid, he kept on asking his mom for something. I'll show you that in here in a minute, what the surprise was. And the mom says, I can't afford that. I'm the only one working, you know, and I can only afford to have pay for the house and food and a little bit of clothes for you guys. So, you know, stop asking. You guys ever had your parents tell you that? Stop asking? You bugging? Yeah. They mean well. Anyway, so he went to uh, Kmart, one of the big stores, with his friends. His friends had two parents, so they could afford different things. So. They had money and they bought something. What do you think that this boy, he was about 12, 11, was wanting so badly from the store? Any idea? What would you want at that age, Samuel? A Nintendo. Nintendo? Wow, big dreams. Anybody else here? What would you want from the store? A Nintendo. Mom, Dad, you have to translate here. <laughs> we don't have kids. So anyway, he saw it there on the shelf, and what do you think he was gonna take? He didn't have any money, remember? He came from a family that didn't have much money. What do you think he was gonna take and try to put in his pocket and sneak out with? A pocket knife? Nope. A chihuahua? <laughs> I don't think they sold them back then in Walmart, maybe stuffed. But he took gloves. Why gloves? Well, don't jump ahead of the story, please. <laughs> I'm telling the story, thank you. <laughs> now, I appreciate you moving along, Colton. But let's save the surprise here for these guys, right? Anyway, what was going on at that time, his buddies had bought a punching bag. How many of you adults remember growing up with those big old body bags that I'm gonna get in shape and I'm gonna be a boxer, because back then, Rocky was your idol or whatever. I didn't grow up Christian, folks, so forgive me. I'm still trying to figure it out here. But anyway, so they had boxing gloves that they bought at Walmart. Well, this, myself, now that Colton opened up the door, I didn't have any. I wanted some. My mom said we can't afford them. So the next best thing was gloves, <laughs> working gloves, to go ahead and punch the bag. Anyway, I'm walking out of the store, real nervous. This is the first time I ever stole. I didn't really know about stealing. Well, I did. Our parents always hammered that, regardless whether you grew up Christian or not. 
Anyway, we're walking out the door. I'm going through the first door. You know how the stores have two doors, right? And getting through the last one, I'm like, whew, I'm out of here with my gloves. Somebody grabbed me on the shoulder there. He said, excuse me, you got something there that you're taking you're not supposed to? Yeah. Takes me back to the little room where the security is and says, you weren't going to do that. I'm going to have to get a hold of your mom who's with you. My older brother's with me. He's the one that drove us. He was older than me back then. He was driving. And so they let me go since I was shaking, sweating, getting ready to collapse to with my older brother. I'm begging my older brother, don't tell mom, please. <gasps> What's going to happen when mom finds out that I was stealing? <laughs> Spanking, punished. Back then, they whacked you with whatever was handy nearby. They call it child abuse now. Back then, it was, you know, uh, upbringing, you know. <laughs> anyway, I got home, and my brother told my mom, what did she do? What do you think she did? No, I was expecting to get hit. She started crying. Crying? Oh, no, not that. Please, take the belt to me. Take something to me. Give me my punishment. I felt so bad. And then my mom, crying with the tears, says, I'm trying to do all I can for you, you know? And this is the way you show that you care? I felt so bad after that, I never snowed. Going back to the Ten Commandments and Christmas, we want many things. Some of you guys like home a new iPhone, a Nintendo. Uh, what are some of the other things you guys are getting involved with? The glasses where you can virtual that are very expensive, yeah. right? Okay, virtual. Okay, see somebody has big dreams there. <laughs> I think you could get a paper route. Check with your mom on that. You could save up for that. But the point of this story is we want many things, but God tells us do not steal in the Ten Commandments because our parents will give us what we need, right? And we just fed the homeless this morning, and many of those adults out there grew up very poor and don't have much of anything, but they seem content or happy with what they have. So let's just keep that in mind. When you want something so badly, you want it, but you need it, right? and then thinking of others as well. Does somebody want to close with prayer? Can I count on one of you guys to pray? Okay, are you going to say a little prayer for us? In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you. Kids can go back. It's, uh, it's us big people's turn to uh, have our offering. Today's offering is going to the annual sacrifice for global missions. I, I question this because I wasn't familiar with this, but basically I was told that the annual sacrifice for global missions is how the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist church uh, collects funds and they do things over the entire world. Uh, I mentioned the one in Florida, the uh, ACS is to, for Florida hurricane, uh, Flo Floridians who were in the hurricane and to help them with the hurricane uh, disaster that happened. This is gonna be going to other places around the world. So both of those are very important. Um, uh, I would assume that this is probably where Ukrainian people are getting some help from. And, and anywhere that something happens that uh, uh, nature-wise that people need assistance. So uh, that's where our offering's going. The, our loose offerings always goes to the church budget. And so, uh, and while I'm talking about offerings, I would like to, to clarify something that we had a discussion in our, um, 
board meeting uh, last month about, and it was uh, a little confusion that was going on as far as church budget versus church improvement. And so I'd like to clarify that just a little bit. The church budget goes to the overhead to operate the church. Uh, the church improvement funds will go to our addition and our uh, remodel project. So if you're interested in just the church budget, that was the one that you, that you uh, give for to operate the church. If you're interested in helping with the construction project and our, our addition and remodel, then on the envelope, there's a place that it says church improvements. And so hopefully that clarifies exactly which place to, to put the money where you want it to go. Um, both are important, by the way. If you look at the church budget, we have a goal of uh, for September of $11,173. We received $8,181, so there's a deficit of $2,992. So even the church budget needs help. So I, uh, I would like to, to I would like to read a, a scripture passage real quick that uh, that might loosen our wallets. Um, I'd like to go to Mark 12, 1 through 4. And it says, And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he also saw a certain poor widow putting two mites. I googled that, and uh, they said two mites was about a penny. And so she had a penny to give. And so, so he said, which he would be Jesus, truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all of these out of their abundance have put in offerings for God. But she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had. Well, you think about it, all her livelihood was probably her grocery money. And she put that into the offering plate. Did the poor widow go hungry? I think not. Because Jesus witnessed how willing she was to give everything she had. So I would assume that she was blessed not only right after, but she was blessed her entire life because she had a heart for God that she was willing to give everything for. He doesn't ask us for everything. He asks us for a portion of what he's given us to be given back to him. So I would like to ask the deacons and the deacon S to stand, and I'd like to have everybody uh, join me in prayer. Dear Father, you have blessed us with so many things, with everything that we have. And now's the time to show uh, us how much we know you love us and how much we love you by giving back a portion of what you've given us. We do this with open hearts. Uh, we want to be cheerful givers. And we want to have our tithes and offerings go to help grow your kingdom and to take care of the needy, the poor, the homeless. So in giving to the church, we can rest assured that this money is going to go to the areas in which you see fit and it's needed the most. I pray this in your name. Jesus, amen.
Whoops. One, two, three. Okay. We have a little bit more business to do today. This is kind of fun business, though. We are uh, we're here to vote on a membership transfer. And uh, Sergio Canto and Matthew Canto Torres uh, wants to move their membership from Clovis Seventh Day Adventist Church in California, Clovis, California, and they're moving their membership to Corrales, New Mexico. And so, uh, first thing I need is I need a uh, motion so that we can open this up. Uh, Rhonda motioned. I need a second. Uh, Rose, second. Ruth, I'm sorry. Um, it was an R word. Yeah. Uh, Ruth, uh, thank you for seconding. And uh, all of those in favor, uh, say aye. aye. All those against, I didn't expect any no, nays. So thank you and uh, welcome uh, Sergio and Matthew, who are not present today. But when you see them, let's remember to welcome them to this church family. And um, uh, I think that was the last of the business. Um, I was asked to announce another, another helper for me today. I, I love all the help I can get. Um, I've just met this gentleman and connecting the dots since I really uh, still don't know the inner workings of all the relationships here at Corrales. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to ask Sam Valencia to come forward. And uh, for those who know, excuse me, those who don't know, this is Priscilla's dad. So this is Mike's father-in-law. And uh, we're going to be blessed because he's going to, uh, he's going to lead us in song. So uh, welcome and, and uh, you have the floor. Sister. 
others, but I'm very happy to know that we have only one God. I'm being very blessed. God bless you all. Thank you, Sam and Molly. I'm asking for more help again. You don't see a theme here, do you? Um, I'm inviting Christian DeBerg to come up, and Christian was uh, uh, gracious enough to say yes when I asked her. You can go ahead and come up. Um, if she would read the scripture for the day. So she's going to, uh, she's going to, Take us to God's word. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles to Luke 4, 18. And it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free those who are oppressed. Morning church family. Good to see all of you here today. Thank you Terry for being our platform and worship leader today and those of you who were involved with <clears throat> excuse me with our service today. How's everybody doing today? Good? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I hope that you guys uh, we're ready to worship. We've come to the portion where we're going to be hearing and also participating in God's word. But before we do that, just a few housekeeping items that I want to do. By the way, those of you joining us online, actually, no, we're not live online, but we are recording this for later. So those who are going to be watching later, we welcome you to our church. Um, I'm sorry? Oh, we are live? Oh, because, okay. Just hit reverse, rewind. Don't pay attention to what I just said earlier, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, we are live, so welcome to those who are joining us online. Um, yesterday, something happened. You guys remember what it was? Veterans Day. So I just want to take a moment, um, you know, to recognize our veterans. So if there's any in our congregation, I'm just going to ask if you could take a moment and just stand up so we can um, honor you and give you our thanks here from the Kerala Seventh-day Adventist Church. <laughs> Thank you. You may be seated. So once again, on behalf of our church, thank you for your service. That is not something that we take lightly, and we are thankful for what you've done and are doing for some of you. Um, let's go ahead and bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious God, thank you for bringing us into this house of worship. We thank you, Lord, that on a Sabbath day like this, we can celebrate you, worship you. Lord, thank you for bringing us through these doors, allowing us to have the freedom to worship on this day. We thank you, Lord, for the veterans who have dedicated their lives and their service, Lord, to advance this cause. And we're grateful for their sacrifice. Lord, I pray that as we show our appreciation, you will also instill in our hearts, Lord, your spirit so that we can give to others, so that we can love others, and so that we can sacrifice for others. Lord, I love this church. I know that you love us, and so we just pray, Lord, that your blessing be poured out on each person that is here today. As we open up your word, may you come to life. May you give us wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know what? I forgot to pray for the quiz, but I think you guys will be fine. I have four questions for you all today. Um, let's see how you guys do. Okay? So first question, this is based on our message from last week. If this is your first time joining us, by the end of these quizzes, you'll have known what we talked about last week. So first question is, what is abuse? Why don't you guys just shout it out? Let's see. What do you think abuse is? OK. What is abuse? All right. It's a quiet Violating audience today. Trust. Violating someone's trust. OK. What else? Intention to hurt them. OK. Um, is bullying a form of abuse? Yeah. OK. Um, exerting your power or your influence over somebody when they don't want it, right? Or doing it in a negative way. 
okay? Let's see what the answer is. This is the official definition that we used, okay? To in intentionally or unconsciously injure or damage someone physically, psychologically, emotionally, sexually, with intent to dominate, intimidate, control, and or exercise power over them. Okay, so last week we talked about different forms of abuse. So let's go to the next question. Name someone who has positional power over someone else. Do you guys know what I mean by positional? So I'll give you two, two answers and then you guys can fill in. So a coach has positional power over the team. Okay, so that person has influence, wields power. That can be abuse. Another one is a pastor. Okay, I have influence on you. Now some of you don't take my advice seriously sometimes, okay? And you still do what you want to do, and that's fine. Boy, he's not really a man of God. You decide whatever you want to do. But by virtue of my position, I have influence over uh, people, okay? So give me another example, and then I'll show you what's on the list. Who else has influence or power? Managers, what else? Parents. Teachers, parents, okay, what else? Jesus. Yes, Jesus has influence, okay, who else? The government officials, okay? Bosses, the military, okay? Let's go to the next slide and I'll give you um, the rest, okay? Pastor, you're a church leader. A lot of you here are church leaders. Your coach, a teacher, a lawyer, a caregiver, a doctor, therapist, you could be a captain or have some kind of ranking, a supervisor, employer, influencer. Now this is becoming more prevalent these days, especially on social media. A parent, a grandparent, husband, wife, or an older sibling, okay? And then there's also economic forms of power, physical, which we talked about earlier, you could bully someone physically, and then emotional um, or psychological as well. Let's go to the next question, okay? Agree or disagree? Christians should not vote. What do you guys think? We talked about this last week. Okay, agree or disagree, and I showed you a um, statement from some of our early Founding fathers are early pioneers. It reads like this, resolve that in our judgment, the act of voting when exercised in behalf of justice, humanity and right is in itself blameless and may be at some times highly proper, but that the casting of any vote that shall strengthen the cause of such crimes as intemperance, insurrection, and slavery, we regard as highly criminal in the sight of heaven. So a lot of the early Seventh-day Adventists, they were faced with this question. Should we vote? Should we not vote? And the conclusion that they came up with is it depends. If you're going to put people into power who are corrupt, who are not exercising justice, then it's better not to vote. But if you're going to um, use your right, make sure you do it and put people in who do bring justice, who do uh, bring what's good for the country. So that is something that you will have to decide for yourself. Okay, and then the last one we're going to do is I want you guys to finish this quote. This is from the book Education, page 57. The greatest want of the world is the want of blank. What's the answer? Okay, so the quote from Education is men. Okay, but obviously it's talking about men, women, it's talking about humanity. And it goes like this. The greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost souls are what? True and honest. What else? Men who do, not fear call to, who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men who are whose conscience is as true to the duty as the needle is to the pole. And men who will stand for the right, though the heavens fall. Do we have men and women like that in the world today? Are you all men and women who are like this? Okay, so I'm calling upon you today, especially as we finish off what we started talking about last week. We're going to do part two of a series that I'm talking about abuse. Okay, so today we're going to talk about abuse in the church, part two. So just a quick preview of what we're talking about. Last week we talked about the story of King who? King David. And King David and the slippery slope that he started on, right? He could not sleep. He was at the wrong place. He should have been out in war. He decided to stay couldn't sleep. He was walking around the roof of his palace, and lo and behold, the Bible says that there was a beautiful woman. There's nothing wrong with being good-looking in this world. Amen? Amen. But the problem is what? King David's lingering eyes, and he wanted something that was not his. 
He started going down this slippery slope, and he used his power. He used his authority. Instead of using it for good in this sense, he used it for evil, and he took advantage of something that he was not supposed to do. So we're going to pick up the story here. I invite you all to go with me to the book of... You don't know yet. Okay, I know we had a scripture reading, all right? We're going to do this sword drill style, just like in AY or Sociedad de Jovenes. Hold up your Bibles, okay? Hold up your Bibles. Once I see all the Bibles held up, we'll get ready to start. I see some of you holding up your phones. That is totally okay in this um, environment, okay? In some other churches, you'll get criticized. Where's your paper Bible, okay? All I care about is you have a Bible, all right? If you don't, I believe there's some with the pews. Or some of you guys are going to fake it and hold up a hymnal, okay? All right. Here we go. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, all right? We're going to talk about another king today, not King David, all right? We're going to start off in the New Testament. We're going to go to the book of Luke, what chapter? Four. Four, okay? And I know it's not a race, but when you do get there first, say amen. amen. Okay, if you need more time, ask for mercy, okay? Is everyone there? All right, Luke chapter 4, just for the context sake, we're going to start in verse 16, okay? Who do you think we're going to be talking about? Jesus, King Jesus, okay? Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Is your Bible in red letters? Yes, but this is not red yet, okay? Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Are we all there? All right, it says, So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. So Jesus' hometown is not necessarily Bethlehem. That's where he was born. But where did he grow up? In the city or the town of Nazareth. And it says, and as his custom was. Do you guys know what a custom is? What is a custom? A tradition. A tradition. Good one, Colton. Anybody else want to take a stab at it? Habit. A habit. Something that you do consistently. So Jesus, as his custom was, where would he go on the Sabbath day? He would go to Bedside Tabernacle, right? No. He would go where? In the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And on this particular Sabbath day, maybe it was his turn to be the platform elder, okay? What did he do? He stood up to read. Maybe it was his turn to read the scripture, all right? It says, and when he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Okay, let's find out what was written. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. Do you guys think we do this? He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That's what Jesus' mission was. And I believe that we are the hands and feet of Jesus, right? What else? He To proclaim liberty to the captives. Do you think we do this? And recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are what? Those who are oppressed. In some translations, who are captives. Okay? Let's go on to the next verse. And it says, and recovery, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then it says that he closed the book, gave it back to attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And then verse 21, what does he say? Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. See, even though David was a man after God's own heart, clearly last week we saw that David had his shortcomings. When he did not keep his eyes on Jesus, guess what happened? David fell. David sinned. And so now we come many years later to one of his ancestors, none other than Jesus, King Jesus, but unlike King David, King Jesus is here to say what? I'm here for those of you who are captives. I am here for those of you who are oppressed. I am here for those of you who are downtrodden. And he's saying that today, that is fulfilled today. And I'm telling you all today, is Jesus here? No, he's in the sanctuary in heaven, okay? But we are his hands and feet. And because of us, then people will see and hear and feel Jesus in their presence, okay? So that's um, one of the things, if you don't remember anything in our message today, I want you to remember this, that we are the hands and feet of Jesus, and our mission is what? 
to take care of those who are downtrodden. So I want to go into some steps that we can take on how to bring about healing and restoration. And I want to start off with an illustration. This is going to be um, something that we're going to look at later on in 2 Samuel. But I want to call up some volunteers that I have asked to help me. Okay, We're going to use an illustration that's based in the Bible. Uh, if I can have Colton, Samuel, and Elijah. Okay, Elijah can stand right there on that side. Okay? All right, Colton, have a seat until I call you up. Okay? And then this right here is, take a step right here, Samuel, is little Samuel. Okay? One of the things that you guys know about myself uh, in our family is we love Legos. Okay? Um, so just remember that for next year's pastor appreciation. Okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, we, we love that nominee stuff. Okay? So anyways, in our family, we love Legos. Okay? So imagine this illustration. Um, in the city, there was two men. One was rich. One was not as rich. The rich man was rich in Legos. He had all kinds of Legos to play with every day. And in that same city, there was another man who did not have as many Legos. In fact, he only had one Lego. Can you guys see it? So small. That's all he had. But he took care of this Lego. Every day, he would wake up and stare at this Lego. When he would go to the bathroom, he would take the Lego with him. Okay. Um, when he would eat, there was the Lego there on his table. So he loved this tiny piece of Lego. Now, the rich man who had all these Legos, one day, he invited his friend who came over. And what do you think they're going to do? They're going to play with the Legos. Yeah, you could put it down, OK? But instead of getting his own Legos, what did this rich man do? He went over to the other man who only had one Lego, took his one and only Lego, and he went back and continued playing with his friends, and they had a good time. And the man who only had one Lego, he was sad, and he cried, and he went to bed that evening crying, right? OK, you guys can go back down to your seats, OK? Now, this story is not necessarily in the Bible, but in 2 Samuel, we see a similar story. But instead of Legos, it was a parable of sheep, OK? Do you guys remember this story? OK? There was a rich man who had all kinds of sheep, and there was one man who had only how many sheep? Just one. And he would take care of that sheep every single day. And so when this rich man uh, was entertaining, instead of using one of his sheep, he stole the other man's sheep. Now, is that a good thing to do or a bad thing to do? It's a bad thing to do. So we're going to look at that story in just a minute. But I want to talk about how we can recover from abuse. So there's going to be three things we're going to look at. And then there's going to be another three things that we're going to look at. But the first one we need to look at is we must admit. So repeat after me. We must admit. We must admit. One more time. We must admit. Well, what are we going to admit? Okay, let's find out. Let's go to 2 Samuel. Let's go to the Old Testament, chapter 12. Okay? This is where we had the story of the, the man with a lot of sheep versus the man with only one sheep. And if you know the story of King David from last week, reading this story is going to start making sense. Okay? First, uh, 2 Samuel, chapter 12. And I'm going to pick up in verse 13. Okay? Because... The prophet Nathan had already told David about this story, and he was very upset. And he says, this man should die. I can't believe he would do such a thing. And he needs to make it right. And what does the prophet Nathan said in verse 13? 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13. I'm in 1 Samuel, excuse me. Is everybody there? Okay, so I'm the only one who's not there. 2 Samuel 12, verse 13. And David, let's start in verse, yeah, let's do verse 13. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Have you guys ever messed up in life? No. Have you ever admitted that you messed up? Yes. See, admitting something is very difficult for some people. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to, to admit that I have messed up. Maybe for some of you it's a difficult thing to admit. 
Um, and maybe for others, it's not such a big deal. Maybe you're constantly admitting that you're messed up. But the very first thing that we ought to do if we want to um, be on the steps to restoration and healing is number one, we must admit that we have messed up. And we see this in King David. He says, I have sinned against the Lord when Nathan called him out on it. And so my brothers and sisters here in this church, if people call you out on something, don't be quick to be mad at that person. Don't be quick to erase them from the Christmas list of cards. Don't be so quick to tune them out because maybe they are pointing out something and yes, maybe they didn't do it in a nice way, but maybe they are pointing out something in us that needs to be corrected. So that's number one. The second thing that we must do is we must ask for forgiveness. Well, what do we need to do? Ask for forgiveness. So um, we're just going to go up to the screen for the sake of time. This is Psalms chapter 51. This is one of the most famous Psalms that um, David has written. And we'll put it up on the screen. Psalms 51, it says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my what? Transgressions. Kids, what is transgressions? It's a long word of my mistakes, my messed up, my sins, right? Let's go to verse 2. What else does he say? Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Let's look at verse 3 and 4. It says, for I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. And then in verse 4, he says, against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Who else did David sin against? Bathsheba. Who else? Bathsheba's husband, Uriah the whole nation, everyone that got involved. But here David is saying, I've sinned only against God. So here's the thing. Not only when we sin, when we abuse somebody, we're not only hurting that person, but who else is affected? Everybody. Sure, ourselves. But most importantly, we have sinned in God's eyes. And so David goes on to, to write some of the most beautiful words you can read in Psalms. But let's go to, I think it's verse 9 or 10. And it says, create in me a what? A pure, a clean, a brand new heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Verse 11, what does it say? Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12, what does it say? Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. The second thing we must do is to ask for forgiveness. The third thing we must do is we must do what we can to make it right. What do we need to do? We must do everything that we can to make it right. Are you guys still in 2 Samuel? Let's go to verse 5. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 5. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. He's talking about the story. And Nathan, and he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die, and he shall restore four, fourfold for the lamb, because he, had, he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Now, I'm not going to talk about who deserves to die and who doesn't, okay? There's probably people here saying, well, you know what? So-and-so did this to me. They deserve to die. They deserve whatever, um, you know, they get coming to them. That's between them and God, okay? But what I want to focus on here is that when we have done something wrong or messed up or if we have bullied someone, we need to make it right. And what does that mean? So we see this concept in the Bible over and over again. In Luke chapter 19, we see the story of Zacchaeus. Do you guys know who Z Zacchaeus is? He's a little man, short little man. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. So as soon as Jesus said, I'm going to your house today. They go together, and Zacchaeus has this conversion. Okay, let's put it up on the screen. It's Luke chapter 19, verse 8. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. Because before that, Zacchaeus was selfish. Okay, he was a tax collector. He wanted all the money for himself. And he says, if I have cheated anybody out of anything, what does he say? 
I will what? Pay back how many times? Four times the amount. And then you can see this concept in the Old Testament also, in the book of Numbers, for the sake of time, we'll skip it. But time and time again, when people are converted, when people have realized that they have messed up, then they start this process of making amends. But what does making it right look like? When you take someone's innocence, how can you give it back to them? When you punch someone, when you've bullied them, how can you make it right to that person? When you've hit your spouse or abused your kid or another family member, how do you make it right? It's going to look different for everybody, but the main point is we have to step up, we have to man up and make it right with that person. So we just talked about people who have abused their power. What about people who have experienced abuse? So we're going to look at um, three things, what we can do if we ourselves have been um, affected by abuse. Let's go back to 2 Samuel chapter 12, and we're going to pick up in verse 13. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. So here's the thing. Sometimes in this life, there's going to be Nathans, prophets, who are going to call sin out by its right name. And so my, first, my other point today when it comes to healing is that accountability leads to healing. Repeat after me. Accountability leads to what? Leads to healing. And in order for this process to start, David had to admit. And so people will admit that they're wrong, but guess what? There are consequences that have to happen. And in this case, David was held accountable. And for us to begin the process of healing, we need to hold people accountable for what they did. And that's going to look different in each case, right? Next thing we're going to look at, recovering from abuse, is God defines who you are, not what happened. Does that make sense? There's a lot of times in this life that we have this victim mentality. Do you guys know what that is? When we constantly blame God for our misfortunes because of what somebody else has done. So it's like, woe is me, woe is me, this happened. And I am sad that this happened to you. But guess what? Jesus died for you, not so you can be a victim, but so that you can be an overcomer. Are you with me? Jesus died for you, not so you can be a victim, but so you can be what? So that you can be an overcomer. God defines who you are, not what has happened to you. You are a child of the Most High. A bully doesn't define who you are. Your spouse doesn't define who you are. And for sure, an abuser does not define who you are. God is the one who has defined you. And the last thing we're going to look at is there is a time for healing. This is going to be our, our verse that we'll close with. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Still in the Old Testament. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. You open your Bible in the middle, chances are you're going to find the book of Psalms or Proverbs, okay? And if you hit Proverbs, the next book over is what book? Ecclesiastes. What chapter? Three. By the way, who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes? Solomon. Who was Solomon's mother? Oh, Bathsheba. Okay, Ecclesiastes, chapter three, starting in verse one. To everything there is a season or a time. A time for every purpose under heaven. Verse 2. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant. A time to pluck what is planted. Verse 3. A time to kill. kill, And a time to what? A time to heal. Verse, and continuing. A time to break down. A time to build up. A time to weep. A time to laugh. A time to mourn. A time to dance. Adventists don't like that one. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones. A time to embrace. A time to refrain from embracing. Verse 6. A time to gain. A time to lose. 
a time to keep and a time to throw away. Verse 7, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, a time to speak. Verse 8, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of what? Peace. How do you heal? Time. When you've been the victim of abuse, it's a traumatic event. And sometimes we're just not ready to forgive just yet. Sometimes we're not ready to move forward. And a lot of times people are like, well, why didn't you know tell somebody? Why didn't you get counseling or this and that? And the thing is, sometimes we're just not ready. And that is okay. Because the Bible says there is a time for everything. And at the right time, you will move forward. Diane mentioned earlier about the fall fest. She's excited about boba tea. But you know why my family does boba tea? Some of you guys already know this. Some of you guys are, are visiting for the first time. Or you may not know the story. But six years ago, when our daughter died, we were devastated. And we were looking for something that we could do to cope with this. We experienced loss. And I'm not saying we got abused, but we were grieving and we needed time. And so we formed this scholarship. You know, we're not rich people, but we do fundraisers. And whatever we're able to, to make from these fundraisers or donations from people like you, we turn around and we try to help other people so they can go to an Adventist school. Actually, just for Christian education in general. And it's not just here in this area. We've helped people in California and other countries as well. And doing this has allowed us to heal. But it's taken time. If you were to talk to the Pastor Mike from six years ago, I would tell you that I was devastated. I would tell you that it was hard to continue moving on. It's six years later. I haven't forgotten my daughter. We've thought of her every single day. And maybe saying it's easier is not the right way of putting it, but we've been able to continue with life. And it's going to be the same way for you. When you've experienced loss, when you've experienced hurt, when you've experienced abuse, when the timing is right, God is going to bring about healing in your life. And maybe that time is now. Maybe that time is not yet. But I hope and pray that if you've experienced some kind of traumatic event in your life, that you will allow God in his perfect timing to heal you. And so this is the end game today. Let's bring it all together. We're talking about abuse. We're talking about abusing power. We're talking about watching out for those who are downtrodden, those who are brokenhearted. If you see something, what should you do? Just let it continue happening, right? If you see something, say something. Put an end to it. Tell whoever you need to help. If you feel God convicting you to get involved, then you be the Jesus to that person. Get professional help. If you feel that you tend to, to have anger issues, if you tend uh, to be, you know, physically hitting people a lot, then it's time to get professional help. Or if this is you who's getting um, attacked or abused, you also need to get professional help. But here's what I want to leave with you all today. What would our church look like if we were the hands and feet of Jesus? What if we were there to help people who are having trouble helping themselves? What if we kept people accountable? We see somebody, hey, you're heading down a slippery slope. You need to be very careful. Do you need help being accountable? I'll be there for you. And then last question, what would our community look like if we were the hands and feet of Jesus? This world would be a better place, right? Would there be less people getting abused? I would hope so. But it starts with who? starts with me. That's why I'm doing this message. It starts with you. And through our influence, we'll be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's have prayer. We're going to sing our closing song, and then some announcements, and then we'll release you.
Gracious Lord, I believe you've called each and every one of us for a purpose. And that purpose is to be your hands and feet. Lord, sometimes we have to call out people. We have to call sin by its right name. Sometimes, Lord, we have to facilitate healing in other people's lives. Lord, maybe we're the ones who have been downtrodden. Maybe we are experiencing brokenhearted. Lord, we need healing from you. Maybe we're not ready yet. Maybe we're ready, but we're asking your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts today. Lord, what would it look like here in this church if we kept each other accountable? If your spirit was in this place, Lord, it would be a slice of heaven. And so I ask, Lord, that you put your spirit within us. And like David, Lord, if we messed up, create a clean heart, a new heart within us. And renew our right spirit. Lord God, this is our hope, and this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why don't we stand up and let's sing our closing song, There is a Redeemer. You know, for those that have been hurt, those that have been abused, we need a redeemer, amen? And that one, that redeemer, is Jesus, God's own son.
we release you all. Um, we just want to prep you for what's happening next Sabbath, so I've invited Denise to come up. Um, we will see you back next week, but uh, we're going to do something different. Yeah, they say that um, one of the best ways to, well, you remember what you last heard best. So next Sabbath, 9 o'clock, we're having a prayer breakfast. Um, everyone together in the gymnasium. We're going to spend some time eating some yummy stuff, um, but also concentrating on how God has worked in our lives in the past year and what we can praise him for. Um, there's a lot of you here, so I expect to see you next Sabbath. Um, your fellowship team leaders are going to let you know what to bring. Each team is responsible for a different portion of the meal. Um, if you're not on a team, contact me. I'm in the directory. Um, text me is the best way to get me. Um, and we'll hook you up with what to bring. All right? Um, have a wonderful week. Thank you. Let's bow our heads. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name the hearts of the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We'll see you next week.